The inversion ankle sprain, also known as a rolled ankle, is the most common injury in sports. The three lateral ligaments are mainly involved and named for the bones they hold together. The anterior talofibular ligament is the most commonly injured, the posterior talofibular ligament, and the calcaneofibular ligament. The inversion sprain is more common than the eversion sprain for two reasons. The lateral ligaments are not as strong as the medial ligaments, and the fibula, the lateral malleolus, is stronger than the tibia, not allowing for excessive eversion movement. These images show the typical inversion movement and a third degree calcaneofibular ligament sprain. As I said earlier, the anterior talofibular ligament is the most commonly injured ligament and its cause is a combination of the inversion and plantar flexion positions. One of the lesser known contributing factors of an ankle sprain is a tight Achilles tendon which causes the foot to plantar flex and supinate. Also, a history of a previous sprain to those ligaments can result in an unstable joint and can become chronic or recurrent if activity is resumed too soon or rehabilitation is incomplete. This slide indicates the varying signs associated with a first, second, and third degree sprain. The amount of ecchymosis and edema shown in this image would indicate a second or third degree injury. Two common ligament stability tests used to determine the extent of ligament laxity after an injury are the anterior drawer test and the Taylor tilt test. The bump and compression tests are used to rule out a suspected fracture. Treatment for an ankle sprain can range from a minor first degree when the ankle can be taped and immediately returned to activity to a severe third degree when x-rays and an MRI exam are needed. A hard cast or walking boot is worn while waiting for surgery and or a rehabilitation program. The goal of a second degree treatment plan is to limit the amount of ecchymosis and edema. You would immediately initiate price using a horseshoe shaped felt pad secured with an elastic wrap. An x-ray to rule out an avulsion bone fracture is recommended. The next day, rehab would begin with an edema release massage followed by a modality treatment of electrical muscle stimulation and an electric cold compression unit. It is important to begin weight bearing as soon as possible to limit loss of strength, range of motion, and proprioception. These images demonstrate the use of the horseshoe felt pad with the compression wrap, ice, and elevation. The avulsion fracture is an injury that occurs from a significant inversion movement and the lateral ligaments pull a piece of bone with them. It can be a partial or complete chip fracture. The less common eversion ankle sprain involves the deltoid ligament on the medial aspect of the joint. It's more common in athletes with pronated or flat feet. The high ankle sprain involves the anterior and posterior tibiofibular ligaments and usually occurs in conjunction with a lower ankle sprain. These ligaments take longer to heal due to weight bearing on the tibia and fibula. A hard cast or boot and crutches are used for three weeks followed by a rehabilitation program.